This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering. Welcome to Project Volunteer. I'm Teresa Rowe and Randy is running late. But anyway, I'm going to tell you all about the Audubon Area Community Services. I'm getting ready to go talk to the director, so follow me. And we won't worry about Randy at all. Where have oh you been, my gosh, oh my gosh. I've been here for hours setting up. We, you're late. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. What kind of co-host are you? Okay, you take, <laughs> hey, you take the steps. You need you the exercise. The steps. I don't need the exercise. You need to exercise. You take the steps. I'll meet you upstairs. Right. This is the thanks I get for being his co-host. Have you ever wondered what nonprofit organizations do or about all their different volunteering opportunities? Or what about hearing testimonies from the recipients of their care? Join us on our journey as we walk in the shoes of a volunteer for a day and find out about some amazing organizations that are literally changing the world. And along the way, meet some true surprising heroes making a difference in the lives of others as we feature another Project Volunteer. Well, hello, I'm Brandon Harley. I'm the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Audubon Area Community Services. Auburn Area Community Services is one of the premier nonprofit organizations in Western Kentucky today. We are a community action agency. We employ about 650 employees yearly. Uh, we operate about 23 programs and uh, we service the, the community in order to alleviate poverty in all aspects that we can find. Uh, we do this because we feel that people have a better opportunity whenever all the barriers that influence their lives are out of the way. We have a lot of folks in our communities that struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. And by us operating various programs, whether they be employment programs, early childhood and Head Start programming, uh, senior service corps programming and social services delivery, uh, income assistance, or any type of Medicaid transportation services, we feel we can make an impact and change people's lives on a daily basis. Uh, we do this through various uh, funding mechanisms. We have uh, federal grants that we operate a lot of our programs. We have some state funds, but the key that makes all this go is our volunteer workforce. Um, we empower folks to empower themselves. Um, Community Action was founded on the maximum uh, feasibility participation philosophy, and in that we let people have a say in their lives. By doing that, we take individuals where they are at, we work with them and give them opportunities, and then get out of their way so they can try to make a difference in their own lives. And through those, we're able to touch over 47,000 individuals in Western Kentucky alone, uh, just in our fiscal year 2019. And in this piece, we were able to really uh, push our communities in different ways, uh, be very innovative, and make a difference in everyone's lives. Uh, for instance, uh, we had a young lady for years ago who was struggling. She was a single mother, a young mother. She hadn't had the opportunity uh, to graduate high school and, and to go on and get her uh, college education. Uh, she participated, she and her family participated in one of our Head Start programs here locally in our community. And through that, she was able to get opportunities both for herself and her children. Uh, her son was successfully able to engage in Head Start, get himself ready for school, and uh, be able to graduate himself. And that young lady herself was able to also get back into school, and she's now an employee of Autumn Area Community Services in that aspect. We see her every day, and she works with us to make a difference in our lives. Um, other people that, that come to see us, um, they can't believe the opportunity the Audubon area can provide folks within our community. Uh, I talk to constituents, to elected leaders, I talk to people on the, on the ground every day. People don't always know Audubon area community services. Uh, they recognize us by our programming, whether that be our Head Start, our Grits Transportation, uh, or our Senior Service Corps opportunities. But um, once they know who we are, they can recognize us and those, those names and those opportunities stick. And people can understand the difference we make in and around our community as we go along today. I'm Robin Mattingly. I'm Social Support Services Director here at Audubon Area Community Services. And one of the programs that we do have here at Audubon is actually three programs, the AmeriCorps Seniors. People have heard of maybe the Foster Grandparent Program, Senior Companion Program, and our RSVP. All these programs are for individuals that are age 55 and older. The Foster Grandparent Program and Senior Companion Program have a little different eligibility criteria in that they do have to meet certain income guidelines. But RSVP, the only criteria is just to be age 55 and older. And statistics have shown 
that as we age, it's really important to stay physically and mentally active. And that's the beauty of these programs. Um, it, individuals have said that through their volunteering, they, they feel better, their, their heart rate is better, their mental health is better. It gives them something to do, a reason to get up in the morning, but ultimately they are also helping others in the community. Our RSVP volunteers are, are so active. They're in food pantries, thrift stores, they volunteer for Habitat for Humanity, the tax assistance programs. We have a group of veterans. Our veterans are, are truly special. All of our volunteers are special, but when you think what the veterans have volunteered for throughout their life and now they're volunteering for us, one of the big things we do each year is a veterans resource fair. And the individuals that come through there tell us because of our resource fair, they're more familiar with community resources that enable them to transition either from active duty to veteran status, or if they've been out of the military for a while, they, they realize that there are so many things that they're eligible for because of their service. But again, we've got volunteers that volunteer in the hospital, they're in schools, we, we're pretty well wide open as far as what our volunteers can do. Uh, we work with over 30 volunteer stations in our seven county area. We have almost 350 volunteers. And again, they tell us that because of their service, they have so they have just improved their, their own health and well-being so much. All together with all three of our volunteer programs, we have almost, um, well, close to 500 senior volunteers in our seven county area. One of the stories that, that we share is that a couple years ago, there was a, a teacher working with a student, and she was familiar with this student before, and she commented on how well he was reading. She said, what did you do? How did you learn to read so well? And he said, well, it was the, the older lady that sits in the library, and I go and read with her ever so often. Come to find out that lady was an RSVP volunteer, and she had worked with that student, and his reading scores had actually improved. What you'll see today is a variety of opportunities that our volunteers can participate in. You're gonna see some excellent RSVP volunteers in action. I'm at Hospice of Western Kentucky and I'm excited to find out all about this amazing organization and the volunteer opportunities. Follow me. Well, my name's Brenda Knollenberg and I'm the CEO for Hospice of Western Kentucky. And to tell you a little bit about hospice, what we do is we provide hospice services for individuals with a life-limiting illness. And what that means is basically if they have a terminal diagnosis, where the prognosis for the disease would be six months or less. So those are our hospice services. We also provide palliative care services, and those are services for anyone with a serious or chronic disease. And then we have our bereavement care, and that's really important. It's not only for the patients that we've served through hospice or palliative care, but that is available for anyone in the community. So in a nutshell, that's what we at Hospice of Western Kentucky do. We really appreciate our volunteers and have a lot of volunteer opportunity at our hospice as well as hospices across the United States and really across the world. So here at Hospice of Western Kentucky, we use uh, volunteers in direct patient care. Sometimes they go and sit with our uh, hospice patients. Um, they deliver flowers. Um, we have volunteers that put flowers together and they deliver flowers to our hospice patients. We have landscape volunteers. We have an inpatient facility, and um, at our inpatient facility is where we care for hospice patients that either have a, um, a, a more acute uh, issues, so instead of going to the hospital, they would come to our inpatient facility, and also for respite care and routine care levels of, of uh, care, they're served at our inpatient facility, which is the Hartford House. And so we have a lot of volunteers that do landscaping there. And it is a beautiful place. It sits on 10 acres. And what's really neat is it's not a direct care type of volunteer that our landscape do, but it's so important to the patients and families that are there because it just offers this really serene and calm environment that our patients can 
you know, sit outside and look at the beautiful butterfly garden. We have a butterfly garden there, or just look at the trees or look at the lake and just, it's really serene and calm and just really helps them um, enjoy the, the last days of their life if, if they're in that stage at the Hartford House. So we're grateful to all of our volunteers. Another way that you can volunteer through hospice is with our um, veteran program. Our veterans are very important to us and we serve a lot of veterans through our, our hospice services and palliative care. And so we have a pinning ceremony and what's really neat is our volunteers are veterans as well that, that work in this area. And so we send a, a veteran volunteer out to a veteran's home and they give them a certificate and they give them a pin and they just recognize the service and what they've um, sacrificed for our country. And it is so meaningful for not only the patient but also their families and our volunteers. And that's another cool thing about volunteering is the, the patients and families get so much out of it, but the volunteers just get a huge amount out of it. We had one uh, volunteer and she sat with patients and she said, this just makes my day to be able to come in and just, just sit and talk to these patients and, and be there for them. Um, you know, just, just to offer a hand to hold if they need to, or just somebody to, to smile at them every day. And so um, that's one of the, the cool stories. Um, we do have a lot of neat stories that I could share with you um, regarding hospice. One of the things we like to do is help patients with wishes. And we had one gentleman that was a pilot and he wanted to fly a plane again before his 90th birthday. And so our nurse worked with some volunteers in the community and we found someone that had a plane and said, sure, I'll take him up and he can pilot the plane. And so he was able to go and, and just fly around our community for an hour or so one day prior to his 90th birthday. And that was just a wish, you know, an end of life wish. So volunteers are really important and we're so grateful for them and, and just grateful for their service in our community. Okay, Rose, I know nothing about flower arranging. So this is what you do as one of your volunteer jobs, right? At right. hospice? Mm -hmm. So can you teach me how to arrange? Because I see all these beautiful flowers here and I really don't know how to arrange them in a vase. Okay, we'll just have to use what we have because okay. sometimes we have a lot more greenery. But usually we just start, put our greenery around first. Just is that like these little berry yeah, thingies? Yeah, just, just plop them in here. Usually we have more... Uh, Plop them, put them in here. <laughs> leather leaf than we do. So I had just gathered these out because I didn't have that many uh, other flowers to do. This is going to be your centerpiece right here. One of the centerpieces. Like and, a, big, and the center. a big flower. Yes, yes. Okay. Because what you're going to do, Teresa, is kind of go like this way where they come down like this, you know. Kind of... These frame yes, just, yes, the center way. of that. Yes. Sir, so right. as far as the colors of the flowers, does it matter no, what goes next? Not, okay. Not really. Usually, right. if I got a choice, like right here, I've got. To, if I got three of these, I try to place the three different colors around the on different the sides. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, where do these go once you're finished with them? Okay, uh, they go to the Harvard House, and then they're delivered to the nursing homes, and then the people who are patients at home. Now, how did you get involved with this, Rose? I mean, this this is a big deal. <clears throat> I don't think I could do this. Fun. No, I can't. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I really didn't. <clears throat> excuse me. I really didn't know that much about hospice. I'd already heard good things about it, but I had gotten a pamphlet in the mail uh, <clears throat> asking for volunteers, and it showed some ladies doing flowers. And I thought, well, I can do that. So <clears throat> it was on a Saturday, and um, I thought, well, Monday I'll call and check it out. So then I just dropped it in my magazine rack by my chair and my had lost my husband <clears throat> recently and so I thought well I forgot all about it and I thought well, I'm gonna have to clean out this magazine rack because I ran across it and I called and uh, Cheryl Wall was the volunteer coordinator at the time so sh she said well she'd been praying for someone to call because she was doing it all by herself at the time and so that's where I got started how many years have you been doing this? Uh, going on 13 years. How has this impacted you, Rose? And, and tell us about some of the people that you've met along the way. Well, when I first started, I told Cheryl that I would not be able to sit with any of the patients. And, uh, but as the time went on, we'd taken the training and I thought, well, okay, I'll try it. So I, the first patient that I had 
I sat with about two weeks before she passed away. And then I got the most sweetest, most loveless note from her daughter telling me how much she appreciated it and so forth and so on that it just really brought tears to my eyes. It was just such joy knowing that I did help somebody a little bit. Mm -hmm. And just sitting with someone just, I mean, that that's worth it all, isn't it? Yeah, because you really don't know how you're going to affect someone. Mm -hmm. You might not have to say anything, it's just being there to know that that's someone right. there that cares. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yours looks absolutely beautiful and mine, well, well, it looks good. It looks help. good. I don't know what to do with this guy. I think I'm just gonna. Yeah. What about, can I do like be creative and put him up high? If that's suits your, that's fine. All right, Rose. Um, I, I probably would need more training um, if I was going to help you, but I kind of enjoyed this. Yeah. I like, I like, uh, you know, the different flowers. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you what, for what you do. I really appreciate you. You're right, welcome. there, my name is Julie Newton. I'm with Audubon Area. I am the Audubon Area Community Service Coordinator here in Hancock County. We partner with the Hancock County Food Pantry and the Hancock County Thrift Store. Um, our thrift store has got receives items that's donated through community members. We take them, we clean them up, and we resell them um, to take the proceeds and help um, others in need. Our um, food pantry has a monthly distribution. We do serve approximately 180 families per month. And um, with both of those programs, we do use the Audubon Area RSVP volunteers. And there's no way we could do it without those volunteers. They are dependable, they're energetic, and they get the job done. So Aunt Marilyn, I was so happy to find out that you were going to train me today for our volunteer opportunity. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm so tickled to be here yes. with you. So, you've been volunteering here for a while. How yes, long? I have. Oh gosh, many years. Many years? Many, oh yeah. Well, teach me what we're going to be doing today. Well, we're going to start loading our baskets. Okay. We've got a bag with all kinds of good food that we bagged up yesterday. Okay. And then we're you gonna tell me what down. to get, so I want to help. And we're going to get apples. Apples. Uh-huh. Look at that pretty pink bag of apples. Yes. <laughs> we're right. going to get some eggs and some butter. Okay. So one egg, one uh -huh. butter. Okay. That's right. Let's uh, see. Uh, maybe I'll put them up here so they don't get yes. uh, mashed. Good idea? Maybe. Yes. I don't know. Okay. Then we're going to go get some grapes. All right. Something good for them. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Grapes. All right. What's next? Some cheese. Cheese. Uh-huh. Alicia's gonna hand you a couple of juices. Thank you, dear. Uh, Cornflakes. Cornflakes, yes. Another blue bag. All right, don't matter which one. Okay, so I'll set that right here. Then we're gonna have a box of meat. Okay, yes. On the phone. I know you're so used to working so hard doing it all by yourself. Thank you for allowing me to help. <laughs> I'm probably you're just welcome. slowing you down, ain't I? <laughs> no, you're you're doing good. <laughs> so why do you think it's important to volunteer in your community? I just like to help. I just I've always wanted to help. I've always volunteered, help at the fifth store, and I help down here a lot. So uh -huh. it's just something I just want to do. Yeah, it's good, ain't it? Yeah, Feels it is. Good. It makes we're you feel good. It we're makes all you good. called to serve each other right yes. help each other yes. and it just feels good to do it right all right all right do we need any buns or just bread yes we're gonna do buns too and you can get a green bag back behind okay, you okay green bag okay mm -hmm. put it in here yes sir and all then right. i think we're gonna head out the door is that it yeah all right so you got uh, it i know they told me what family i'm gonna deliver it to so i'm gonna go on head out the door and okay. take it to them you do that. Thank you for the training. Well, anytime. I, I hope I can it. help anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your inspirational story. Okay. And being an inspiration to your family. All right. Oh, you are to us too, Randy. <laughs> thank you. How are you all doing? Good. How are you? 
Good. Right I'll in. load it in back, okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. see me drop that bread, okay? <laughs> but it's still good, it's still good. It was soft, at least it wasn't the eggs, okay? <laughs> How are you all doing today? Good, how are you? How doing are you doing? good. My name is Randy. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to load up your vehicle here. And uh, y'all didn't see me drop that bread now, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> didn't hurt the bread, nice and soft. <laughs> so I just wanted to ask you, uh, you all real quick, if you don't mind, uh, what do you all think about a, a great organization uh, like this? Well, without Julie, there, we wouldn't be getting a lot of stuff to, you know, we normally can't afford. She gets stuff from us from these farms in Florida and all this other stuff, and we get fruits, vegetables, milk, eggs, cottage cheese, yeah. all kind of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, she's awesome. This organization is grand. I tell you, it's good to have organizations like this all over the country, right? Right. Now, there might be some people watching this show that might be thinking about volunteering at a place like this. What would you tell them to inspire them? They need to. If I was healthy enough, I would volunteer to help them here, but yeah. my health won't allow it anymore. But, yeah. I mean, right now, in today's day and times, we need this. Yes. Badly. Yes. Because we don't know what the future holds with this COVID and everything, so right. we need it. Yes, absolutely. They're a blessing for sure. <laughs> yes, they are. And like I said, she does. She goes beyond her normal duties to get us stuff. Yeah, that's she awesome. She really does. Thank you all so much for your time and allowing me to serve you and loading up the loading up the food. Well, you're Thank quite you. welcome. God bless y'all. Thank God you. God bless y'all and what y'all do. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great day. You too. Okay. Daniel, thanks so much for showing up today to help me out. I'm glad to be here. Typically, I'm the one that's being trained, but I get to train you today. I don't know that that'll be a good thing, but we'll see. <laughs> yes, it will be. All right, see all these pants hung up? Okay. So, directly behind you, you're going right. to find some pants, and we're going to start to hang these up on the hangers. It's okay. not that hard, right? Well, it could be hard for, uh, for me, but we'll see what we can all do. Right, I we'll think you can do it. Certainly all do right. our best here. You know, Ottoman Area Community Service is an amazing organization. I mean, they've got volunteers all over the place helping out. Absolutely, yeah. Ottoman Area is a great organization. In fact, did you know I used to work there? I had no idea. I absolutely did. And I'm very familiar with a lot of their programs that bring services to the uh, needy in the community and they utilize volunteers to do that and so it's a big passion of mine to be involved with organizations like this not only at Audubon but across the state of Kentucky where organizations serve folks in need whether it's mm -hmm. with food maybe food insecurity or clothing right um, things for seniors like senior companion programs so it's uh, just a passion of mine to help out with these organizations and um, you know, with United Healthcare, we do this all across the state, so I get to see firsthand the impact it has on lives and how volunteers can help make that happen. Right. You yeah. know, Daniel, I think you hung these up the wrong way. Oh, I'm did I really? Read. Now, don't right. be surprised. <laughs> do you think that's my fault or the tra is that the trainer's fault? <laughs> see, all the hangers are going this way. No, I I'm just kidding with I you. Feel you like, know I am. Yeah, I feel like you're a little biased on that. So. <laughs> oh, do you have any stories of inspiration to share? You know, uh, one of the programs that stands out, um, and you see this across the state, not just at Ottoman, is the 
low income heating assistance program so folks that maybe can't afford their utility bills are able to come and, mm -hmm. um, and when they start getting the funds to help out in the community you'll see um, a line around the block of people that are just in need wow. and to see them come in and be able to get the help that they need and then leave um, mm -hmm. they're just so much happier as they're heading out the door knowing that they've been well served and they don't have to worry about having heat during the winter. So that's one that probably stands out the most. There's always a great benefit to oh. the person that's volunteering. Hey, Daniel. I, I dropped some. Um, sorry about that. No, I think you did it again. But it's okay. I'm just going to turn it around for you. Oh, sorry about you, that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> no, but thank you so much uh, for coming out today and volunteering. And you know I'm just kidding with you, but make sure you hang it right. Okay? How's this? All right. Hey, Daniel, thanks so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Hey, Randy. Hey, what? Say cheese. Che cheese! Oh, Get that it? was such a cheesy joke. I know, I know. I, I was going to say jokes. corny joke. I'm sure there's some corn around here. I'm sure so. there is. Corn chips or something like that. <laughs> hey, you know what? Audubon Area Community Services, what a great organization. They do so much good in so many different counties. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to be working. We are. My Aunt Marilyn's going to get on me if I don't get this Put done. Put the cheese in the cart. No, they are. And being with the volunteers and just listening to their stories of inspiration on, like, why they volunteer, and the people that they impact and how it blesses them as well is just pretty incredible. It is incredible. We hope everybody out there in your community, no matter where you live, get involved, get out, get your hands dirty, volunteer, serve those in need, make a difference in the world. That's Thanks right. so much for watching Project Volunteer. Bye. You, you need to you take need the, the steps, steps anyway. Bye. This is the kind of treatment I get Go every enjoy single the show. time. If you have an idea for our show, a story of inspiration, and the door's or not going to close. nominate a volunteer hero, get in on the conversation on our Facebook page or go to projectvolunteer.org. <laughs> 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 This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering.